Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, distinguished guests, and of course, the stars of today's show. Welcome, class of 2021. Thank you so much for having me here and affording me the time to celebrate such a special day with you all. My name is Morao Mutlatui, and I am a creative. Now, let me break that down for you. Firstly, I'm an actress, which means I basically pretend to be other people for a living. Secondly, I am a writer, and that means that I make things up. I'm not a liar, <laughs> but I'm just a storyteller. As an actress and a writer, sometimes the line can be a little bit blurred between real life and story life. However, in the story world, someone just got married, whereas unfortunately, some of us are still looking for a boyfriend. Number three, and a lot of people don't know this about me, um, I'm actually a certified life coach and neuro-linguistic practitioner. This means that I'm actually qualified to help people discover their path, purpose, and motivate them to do and be better than what they are right now. And that is what I hope to offer you today. So enough about me. I hope that short introduction gives you an idea of who I am. Before we start, I'd like you to do a small exercise for me. I'd like you to close your eyes and indulge me for a few minutes. I want you to relax and think about your first day coming to school. How did you feel? Was there some anxiety? Were you scared? Were you excited? Did you make it in time for orientation or were you late? Think about that day. Think about how you felt. Think about what your goals were when you first set foot on your campus. Look back and think about all of the goals that you had set for yourself in the beginning of this journey. Now, I want you to think about some of the disappointments that you faced. Were you able to hand in all of your assignments on time? Were you able to deliver on everything that the school required of you? Take your time, think about it. And then think about some of your achievements. What did you actually do right during this time? Did you achieve all of the goals that you set out to achieve? What were your challenges? And how did you overcome them? Because that in itself is an achievement. And then lastly, think about the lessons that you've learned from your failures, your disappointments, as well as your achievements and your success. Combine the two together and think about the journey that you've traveled to get you to this point today where you can proudly say, that you have done it, you did it, you are here, and you are graduating. Now, this is uh, very interesting because <clears throat> this is being recorded, so now it's going to be out there for a very long time. But I have a confession to make. And Galukhupala, don't judge me because <laughs> this is how life goes. Ladies and gentlemen, it took me six years to finish a three-year degree. Six years to finish a three-year degree. And that's all because I was impatient, I was impulsive, and I ended up making decisions that would have long-term effects on my life. I want to get into the story of why it took me six years to finish a three-year degree and why I do not see this as a failure. So this all basically started in 2011 when I was a student, a first year student at the, at the University of Johannesburg. And initially I was supposed to be studying law. My parents knew from when I was in matric that I had applied and I had been accepted to study law. But 
at the very last minute, I decided, like any good child would do, that I'm going to go in the opposite direction of what I had planned, and I decided to study film. Now, obviously, at that time, it's the end of the year, you know, um, applications were closed. The only thing that I could do is wait for late applications. Fortunately, I was able to get accepted into a degree called audiovisual communications, which is just another way of saying film and television. Now, the plan for me was to be a director and a writer. Acting was not a part of the plan for me. However, in first year, in March, I was told that we would only be able to start shooting our own stories. I would only be able to start directing in third year. That did not sit well with me, so Morau did what any good child would do. I took matters into my own hands, and I decided to go explore the world. Now, I sent out my CV, and mind you, I had just gotten out of high school, so my CV was pretty empty. I literally just had primary school, high school on my CV. But in first year, 2011, I decided to send out my CV to a whole lot of production companies asking if I could shadow their directors, their um, producers, not knowing exactly how the industry worked because I was impatient. A lot of production companies did not respond, but the few that did get back to me did tell me that unfortunately they would only be willing to take me um, after my first year. Of course, that was a big blow to my ego because I thought that things were going to be easy, but I did not let that stop me. I decided that I was going to be an extra on TV just to get onto a set, just to make the networks of meeting the director and the people who work together to make a show happen. Luckily for me, a week after making this decision, I found out about auditions for this new thank you show that was going to be on TV for SABC. And to make it even better, it was an SABC education show. So if I got onto the show, I could just tell my lecturers, or well, no, it's an educational program. I went and I auditioned for this show. I actually auditioned for the role of Rachel, but they asked me to then read for a character called Mapiti, very small character, and she was just the girlfriend of the lead at that time. And that is the role that I got. That is how I got onto Skim Sum. Now, going back to the point of why it took me six years to finish a three-year degree, I got distracted from what my goal was. I got distracted from the goal of finishing school. Yes, the distraction was in the same industry that I, was, that I wanted to be in, However, it did hinder my progress in this particular field. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is that you recognize, realize, and visualize your goals so that you are able to stick with them. I was fortunate enough to have a goal that led me into what I'm doing right now. I was fortunate enough to have the ambition to not wait for what my degree was going to offer me. However, there were sacrifices that came from making the decision of working and studying at the same time. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter how the journey goes. What matters the most is how you finish. The reality of why we are here today is that you guys out there had the power, the strength, the courage to start something and finally finish it. I think that some of you will agree, Rore, the only reason you were able to get to this point today, which many people were unable to get to, was because number one, you made the right decisions. The decision to study while other people were partying. The decision to put effort into the work that you do. The decision to attend classes, whether virtually 
or in person because of our whole COVID situation, you made the right decision by choosing your future over all of the distractions that were happening out there. Number two, you made the decision to keep pushing. Graduates, I know how difficult it is to remain focused when there are all these distractions, having fun, girlfriends, boyfriends, family life. There are sacrifices that you had to make. There are people that you had to let go of in order for you to find yourself in this position today as a graduate. And that is one of the ways that you just keep pushing. When things got hard, I know that many of you did not just sit down and say, Ore, it's hard, there's nothing I can do about it. But you kept on moving forward. Number three, I'm sure some of you learned from your mistakes. I know personally, I learned from the mistakes of not studying for tests and exams. And I'm sure a lot of you went through the very same experience. You learn from the mistakes of coming late to class, whether online or virtually. You learn from the mistakes of having certain people around you in your circle. That is why you've had to let some people go, because they were not conducive to you getting to where you are today. Number four, you had to believe in yourself. This is probably one of the most difficult things that people can actually learn to do. But believing in yourself is what will make your dreams come true. You have to believe that you deserve everything that you want. And you deserve to be here today watching this because you put in the work. Now, let's do another exercise. I would like you to close your eyes, similar as the first one. Close your eyes. Relax. Envision yourself three to five years from now. Where are you? What are you doing? Do you work for someone? Or are you self-employed? How do you feel? Are you proud of the decisions that you've made thus far? Have you believed enough in your dreams to keep pushing to get you to a point where you are happy with the life that you are living. It's three to five years from now. What are those goals? You being here today was once a dream, was once a goal. And the fact that you are here today is testament to the fact, that you can make your dreams come true. It's testament to the fact that if you put your mind to something, you can achieve it. I have a little quote for you just before I close. It says, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I'll say it again. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. You believed enough in yourself to get to this point. And I urge you to keep believing in yourself because it will be hard out there. I urge you to keep pushing and working hard for your dreams because you are going to have competition. You are going to have to make sacrifices. I urge you to keep dreaming as big as you possibly can and reaching as high as you possibly can so that you can land on the stars and in the clouds if you do fail. And if you do happen to fail, I urge you to learn from those lessons. Pick yourself up and keep moving. You've done it before. You've achieved before. The only thing that you can keep doing for yourself is repeating what works. Believe in yourself. Keep working hard, keep pushing, and be very, very aware of the people that you have. Excuse me. Be very aware of the people that you have in your surroundings. It's important, and this is what I will leave you with. It's important 
to remember that nothing is given to you. If you want something, you need to go out and take it. And that's not an easy thing to do. And the only way to do it is with another quote from one of my favorite people out there, Walt Disney. And it says, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. This is only the beginning of a new chapter in your life. And I wish you all the best in making all of your dreams come true. Thank you.